Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing how to build this freestanding ladder bookshelf. This is the first new build of 2023, so I hope you're excited to dive in and get building. If so, let's go. This video was sponsored by my friends at the Home Depot as part of the Prospective program. This means that I've added a new tool to the shop and I'll be sharing a few of its features with you throughout this video, so stay tuned. For now, let's discuss some material details. I built this project in two different parts, the frame and the shelves. We'll discuss the shelf sizes and materials when we get there, but for now, let's talk about the frame. I made the frame from one by twos and two by twos. You can definitely purchase these as pre-cut boards, but if you have a table saw, it's a little cheaper to rip your own from wider boards. Altogether, to make the frame, I needed four two by twos and four one by twos. Once I had my frame materials gathered, I began cutting things down. For this, I used the Ryobi One Plus HP Cordless 10 inch compound sliding miter saw. <laughs> That's a mouthful. This is a new addition to the workshop this year. So why do I need a cordless miter saw? While I do have power and outlets in my shop, having a cordless option is really great for taking on the go, taking in the house or around the yard. If you live in a newer house, you may have noticed that the AFCI breakers that are now required by code tend to trip fairly easily, especially when using a corded saw. So even if I wanted to drag my corded saw in the house to cut some trim or whatever, I couldn't even use it in those outlets anyway. That's why having a cordless option is really great, especially if you ever work outside the shop like I do. It runs on the same Ryobi one plus 18 volt batteries that my other Ryobi tools use and one high performance battery can last up to 550 cuts. This saw has a miter range of up to 47 degrees, both left and right, a bevel range of up to 45 degrees and a cross cut capacity of 12 inches. This saw is part of the HP lineup of tools, which you may have heard me mention before. It means that these are high performance tools. They're designed with brushless motors, which provide longer tool and battery life along with increased performance. This saw is available exclusively at the Home Depot and you can check it out at the link in the video description below. Okay, so for this bookshelf frame, I cut two two by twos with square ends for the back, but the front two pieces slant towards the top. So these have mitered ends. The miter angle here is 8.3 degrees. Now I know that 8.3 isn't specifically marked on the gauge, so just set it somewhere between eight and nine, but a little closer to eight. You wanna be close, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I mitered both ends of these front two two by two pieces so that they would slant backward. Then I cut two small two by two pieces for the top with one end square and one end mitered 8.3 degrees. Next, I trimmed down two one by twos to run along the bottom between the front and the back pieces. Again, these have one square and one mitered end. And finally, I cut 10 one by twos for the shelf supports. I promise things start making a little more sense here in just a second. Once everything was trimmed to length, I sanded each piece and moved on to drilling pocket holes. Now, you can certainly assemble this project using another joinery method if you'd like, but pocket holes worked great for this. I drilled three quarter inch pocket holes into the ends of each one by two piece. Now, I know that you typically drill two pocket holes in each end, but I find that one by twos split fairly easily with two pocket holes in them. So I prefer to use wood glue and one screw per joint. The screw will support the weight, but the glue will kind of help prevent it from twisting. For the bottom one by two pieces, I made sure to drill the pocket holes so that they mirrored each other. This way the pocket holes will both face the inside once it's installed so that they're hidden. Then I assembled the two side frames. I used wood glue on each joint and installed the bottom one by two brace one and a half inches up from the bottom edge with pocket hole screws. Then I used a countersink bit to pre-drill a hole to secure the top two by two in place. Keep in mind that the square ends of the top and bottom pieces go on the back side. Once the top and bottom were attached to the back, I added the angled front piece the same way. Then I used some wood glue and a wood dowel to plug the countersunk holes at the top. I flesh cut these and sanded them smooth once the glue had dried a little later. 
Then I repeated this whole process to build a second side frame, making sure that this one was mirrored to the other one. I use wood glue and pocket hole screws to add the one by two shelf supports between the sides, starting with the back pieces first. And again, the dimensions for everything can be found in the plans linked in the video description, but I measured and marked where the top of each support should be along the back side of the frame. Once these rungs were secured to one of the side frames, I flipped it over and repeated to attach it to the other side frame. Then I needed to add the front rungs at the same locations. To get the front pieces level to the same location as the back pieces here, I'm just taking a scrap piece, bringing it right up to the top of the back rung and then using my square along the back edge, squaring this board to it and then drawing a line here. So that's where I need to put the top of my front rung so the tops of these will be at the same like height. Bub, Bubby, please remove yourself. Thank you. I used a scrap board and a square to mark the locations for each rung and secured them in place. I tried to install them so that they were square to the bottom, like to the floor, and not angled with the front piece. I didn't measure this to be exact, I just kind of eyeballed it. And again, once one side was secured, I flipped it over and secured to the other side to complete the frame. With the frame built, now it was time to add the shelves. Now I promised I would come back to the topic of materials when we got to this point. So as it's designed, each shelf is two inches deeper than the one above it. The top shelf is seven and a quarter inches deep, the next is nine and a quarter inches deep, and so on. So that means that you could use a one by eight, a one by 10, and a one by 12 board for the top two shelves. If you happen to have any wide board scraps laying around the shop, this would be a great use for them. For the bottom two shelves, you could glue up solid wood panels. The next to the bottom shelf could be made from gluing together a one by 10, a one by two, and a one by three. And the bottom shelf could be made from gluing together a one by eight, a one by six, and a one by three. However, if you didn't wanna use solid boards for this, you can certainly just cut down some three quarter inch plywood. You only need a little under a half of a sheet for all of these pieces, and I've provided a cut diagram in the plans. You guys know me, if plywood is an option, that's probably what I'm using. So I use my circular saw and cutting guide to cut down my five shelves. I cut them to rough length with the circular saw and then brought them over to the miter saw to square up and trim down to final size. I mentioned earlier that this Ryobi 10 inch sliding miter saw has a cross cut capacity of 12 inches, but that doesn't mean that you can't cut wider boards. Since the bottom two pieces were wider than 12 inches, I marked and cut as much as I could, then flipped it over and finished the cut. Once all the shelves were trimmed, I applied iron-on edge banding to cover the exposed plies. This is totally optional, but just makes things look a little cleaner. To make things easier, I went ahead and applied a finish to the frame and the shelves separately before putting it all together. I stained this piece, but you can certainly paint or finish however you'd like. I kind of think a black frame with wood toned shelves would have looked really cool, but I went ahead and just stained this whole thing a single color. And once the stain was dry, I finished up by installing the shelves. There are a million ways that you could install these shelves. You could use corner or figure eight brackets on the underside, you could use screws from the top, you could also use dowels or pocket holes. However, I kept it really simple and just applied wood glue to the tops of the shelf supports and then clamped these shelves on until dry. If you wanted, you could certainly use some finished nails as well, but I just used glue to avoid seeing any nail holes. Glue alone should hold just fine. And once the glue had dried and a few coats of poly were applied to seal it, it was ready to load up. This is such a simple design that could be decorated to fit a farmhouse or a modern style. 
And I also love this size. It's not too big, but not too small. Perfect for a home office, a living room, even a kitchen or a bathroom. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it come together. And if you wanna build your own, don't forget to grab the printable plans linked below. A huge thanks to The Home Depot for making this video possible. And if you wanna keep up with all the latest projects and videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow along. Thanks so much for watching friends. And until next time, happy building.